Welcome to part 5 session of Selenium Framework. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the core components of a Selenium Framework. Let's uh, go by one by one. In the left pane, you could see here uh, this particular package, right? Uh, CodeTech.QA, Automation.Lips.Create issue page. In this, you could see method, page method library, page object library. Let's uh, jump directly into this particular uh, object library. Object uh, library, basically, it contains the web element of a page, particular page. So in this example, you could see uh, this class contains all the web elements of a of this particular uh, create issue page class. Okay, so you could see here is hard find by. This is an annotation uh, that uh, that was provided by Serenium web driver using a page factory class. So this helps us to declare and define uh, the web elements of a page uh, are find by name equal to username right so the like like this we'll define all the web elements can be defined using a different locators as well just here a name xpath id css right and we can also represent the id using this particular method how we equal to out id this uh, indicates id the actual locator will be used here create issue submit the value of the id okay something like this okay let's move on to method page method library really method library contains all the utilities i mean the methods that are uh, reusable inside a test class so we will define all the methods inside this particular uh, class file okay here you could see here we have created uh, uh, this this is a constructor right page method library create issue page it's a constructor it uh, as an initialization so here uh, we have created an object and uh, we are uh, initializing the page factory so this helps us to initialize the web element of a particular page if we could see here page uh, object library create issue page class so we are trying to initialize the web elements of this particular class create issue page class okay so that is all about uh, using this constructor we are trying to initialize the web elements that's it and let me move on to the other methods about this particular method okay so uh, this takes a parameter username and we have method called uh, enter data okay so let me get into this uh, method so this is the method uh, which is written inside a test utility class okay test utility class if we could see here this particular class extends test utility so it acquires the property of a test utility utility class so this is a child class it uh, it is going to use all the methods which is present inside this particular test utility so that is why we have uh, mentioned here enter data right so okay let me get into this okay see this uh, takes four parameters right okay well, i'll do one thing i'll uh, open up a paint and show you uh, so that it uh, You'll get a more idea on it. Okay, let's. Uh, I'll do one thing. Let me copy this particular line. Okay, I'll paste it here, and we'll go with this. Uh, what is that method library? Let me open up this enter data so that I'll move into this particular enter data method. Okay, let me capture the method enter method here. Okay. Now, if you could see here, so this is the enter username method. Enter username method. In uh, inside this met method, we have different method enter data. So that has been defined inside test utility class. So here you could see the, this enter method, right? So it, uh, it is taking four uh, different uh, arguments. That is uh, web element, string value, in wait time locator. Okay. So this element right this represents the actual web element of that particular uh, uh, page this takes an exact value uh, which is which is going to get into the uh, particular field and this wait time right this represents the ideal wait time of that particular uh, field so string locator name this is used to uh, this is used for uh, reporting purposes which i'll show you later now you could see in this uh, try catch block right uh, we have uh, called a test utility to wait for, wait for an object okay let me go into this particular method okay so this has written inside test utility class and you could see here this method helps us to 
wait until a particular element is visible so that is why we are using this particular wait for an object method okay let me uh, jump into this particular thing okay so the now the element is identified it, it is moving on to this particular line element of send keys trying to enter a value into this particular uh, particular field okay once it is entered if it if it's able to identify a particular element and if it's able to enter a value then this test gets passed here okay we'll we are saying that a value has been entered successfully on this particular locator okay if it the if it unable to find that particular element what happens here is we are going to throw some exception so we are going to print some log saying that we are unable to print the uh, sorry we are unable to enter the element and we are trying to capture the screenshot of that particular ratio why it is not able to enter a value and we have we had used a logger or info uh, set dot asset true false we are explicitly failing this particular uh, method in case if there is any exception onto it okay so that's all about this particular uh, element so let me move on to this particular uh, method library itself okay so we have seen about enter data right likewise we have uh, used to click enter uh, issue search text box here we are uh, using a uh, click enter key method so we have defined the click enter key method like this so we have a different sort of uh, methods so see let me move on to this particular create issue page this is what we have been talking about right a uh, method library create issue page see i was talking about enter username right now let me move on to create a click continue button so this is the method which helps to cl click a particular continue button and this enter password right this method helps us to enter a data on a password text box this method is used to click the login button so if we, if we, if you could see here we have written all the particular uh, reusable methods in inside this uh, method library class so we in in this way we can avoid the code duplication and code can be easily maintained inside our test class so that is why we use uh, uh, object library and method library and one more thing uh, let me tell you that also see in case if a developer is making some changes on a particular element right okay obviously our test is going to fail if you have written uh, uh, locators inside a test class then obviously it's very difficult to make a change on a test class something like this see in the earlier session we discussed about the part 4 right see here you could see all that uh, elements that we have uh, written using drive order find element we have uh, so many drive order find elements right so if developer is making a changes on one particular element we will have to identify a particular class file and we are test class test file and we will have to make those changes to the respective elements but if, what happens like if you maintain a particular object library we can directly make out make the changes inside this particular class and that helps us to build the robust automation framework so that is all about uh, uh, object library and method library uh, usage okay and uh, now let's uh, move on to the test execution i'll show you okay let me uh, trigger the test execution part now so just uh, trigger the test uh, testng testsuit.xml file is going to trigger our uh, test execution it has opened up the atlassian page now it is entering username and password since it has a bug it is entering two times now it is going to click on a qa automation project uh, link so here you could see the link right it has clicked it now it is entering into this issues page so it is going to create two bugs now using uh, uh, page object library and page method library let's wait it is creating a second bug it's got created now it is going to validate whether the bug is uh, present on a search issue page first it is going to validate on the report me reported by input page and then it's going to validate the same issues on the uh, search issue page once it is validated it is going to generate the test report let me see this particular line uh, particular execution so you could see here all that uh, test uh, have been passed Okay, let me refresh in the left pin you could see test reports right let me refresh that uh, test report if where you could see this report uh, got generated here let me open that up. okay i'm opening up in using a chrome html document okay now you could see here all the tests have been passed okay 
and you could uh, keenly watch right so what you could see the steps also here whether it has entered the value correctly or not whether it is uh, clicked correctly or not how this is coming so i'll show you and the method library right i as i showed you enter data so here we are printing the logs like this test dot log log status dot pass the value has been entered successfully so this represents that thing that value the country button has been clicked successfully entered successfully something like this so we can uh, monitor all the actions using this particular uh, method if you are able to pass all the test logs here then it allows you allows us to get the values something like this okay now we'll do one thing we'll explicitly fail the test okay uh, we'll change this particular web element okay i just removed the icon text okay this in this particular uh, let me close all this in this particular create issue page i just uh, removed this particular icon text inside this locator okay let me trigger the execution we have uh, we have the report already let me trigger the test execution now again okay obviously our test is going to get failed okay so in this way we will try to uh, know how our test report helps us to identify the exact root cause of the failures okay let's see the code uh, as well okay let it execute uh, in the meanwhile we'll see the code uh, also okay uh, just this is the search issue page uh, let me open up the create issue page as I, as I showed you earlier, right? Now we have written the logs here uh, inside this enter data, something like this, in the catch block. Okay. So obviously, if any failure comes, it has to come to this particular uh, catch block. Okay. In that catch block, we have written test logs, something like this. So obviously, the log status dot fail, it enables to enter a value. Okay. And we have also written the logger dot info. So that helps us to know. The actual failures in the console we are explicitly failing the test okay so this is how we have to write our code so this helps us to build the robust framework you could see we have click enter key we have uh, did we did the same approach try catch block we have written all the test logs in the uh, in the try try block we have got all the exceptions inside this particular catch block now the test execution is done okay uh, only one test is being passed here okay let me open up the report and i'll show you okay this is 245 okay report. Mm, okay so obviously see uh, it is trying to click this particular uh, create global button but that is not actual element right? which uh, that is the reason it is failing and it has also provided the screenshot on on where it is failing Okay, so here if we could see also, it was not able to identify that particular element. Okay, these two uh, tests are failed. Okay, and the rest of the test cases, right? Because since it's unable to create a bug, obviously the other uh, uh, test will also get failed, right? So with this, so we have clearly understood our uh, uh, about uh, object library, method library, page factory, everything, right? So we have come to an end of a session. So far we have seen about part one, part two, part three, part four, part five session of Selenium framework. So we had a detailed code walkthrough that helps you to build the automation framework from scratch. Don't worry, if you have any doubts, please post your queries in the comment section. Just glad to clarify them. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, subscription. Uh, it really motivates me to come up with uh, exciting content. Thank you so much. I'll meet you soon in a next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.